Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Last time I came to confession, David Tennant was still the doctor. Wait, what? Father, I must confess that I really want the Chumblies to come back. Doctor Who needs more cute villains. There, I said it. You disgust me. Really? Because I happen to know that you like the Pating. I'm, I'm sorry, which one of us is meant to be giving the confession? My understanding of this story's rep these days is it's pretty sexist and not very good, but it's kind of a laugh, and if you go in wanting to like it, you can. Long-time viewers will know that a question I obsess over is, what's the best way to take in a missing story? And there is actually an objectively correct answer. You watch any remaining episodes and clips you can, and then join us in a hunt for the rest. Watching the surviving episode of this boosted my opinion of it. So whilst I agree that some stories being missing might have aided their reputation and certainly bolstered fandom mythology, there is something of a knife's edge to it. I bet the Abominable Snowman would be in a lot more people's top tens if more of it survived. So it's certainly not unwatchable, and the animation gives it a nice lick of paint, but it's like when I reviewed Legend of the Sea Devils. Every era in its twilight hours puts out a story that's very typical of what they usually do, and it's a sign that this version of the show has just become a bit tired. Not all of them are bad, some of them could be fun, Others are quite bad, and I think you could make a case for Galaxy 4 being this kind of story for the Lambert era. It's very... the Daleks. The TARDIS team land on an alien planet, let's go explore. A conflict between a bunch of Aryans and a bunch of Trundley robots. Bonus points for having slimy creatures being the ones behind them. And on top of that we have what's basically the same twist as the Sensorites. The Dravins had the potential to be interesting, and we spend a lot of time with them, but they're just so unambiguously evil. A matriarchal, eugenics-based, classist society, but I don't know what Ems was even trying to do with them. If the feminists take over, they'll kill us all, and then they'll stop having sex with us. They'll, um, force us all to eat pills and, um leaves. I'm sure you're aware that this is Doctor Who in a transitionary period. Ferity Lambert was leaving and focusing more on Mission to the Unknown, which means the incoming producer John Wiles and new script editor Donald Tosh were basically running this. Now, I have to confess, yes I am sticking with this gimmick, that whilst we've all heard the stories about how John Wiles and Bill Hartnell didn't see eye to eye behind the scenes. Let me just put this to rest. Those stories are completely and utterly accurate. Wiles was threatening to fire Hartnell on day one. And that wasn't all. Maureen O'Brien raised complaints with the script, both to the writer and to the script editor. Gratitude deficiency. Shameful behaviour. John Wiles was totally in the right. Bill Hartnell also raised objections. And good on him, John Wiles was totally in the wrong. And all of this led to Maureen being told that they were writing her out of the series as soon as she came back from holiday, halfway through the Myth Makers. Putting aside the dubiousness of the decision to get rid of one of the best companions in Classic Who, this is just blatantly unfair treatment. And I don't even know why it was necessary. I mean, the conversation seemed to have ended when John Wiles intervened. The warning shot had been fired, so it, it just seems cruel. Man, isn't the entertainment industry so fun and nice to women? Now, whilst everything I've said so far is kind of a deal breaker, there are still some good points. 
They've learned how to tell stories like this much quicker, so we have four parts instead of a six or seven. Each cliffhanger, with the exception of number three, leaves the story in a different place, and there's a decent structure. Despite the actors being treated like shit, I do think the companions get some good stuff. Steven's got Barbara's dialogue, but we still see sides of that cynicism that he becomes known for. I can somewhat see the merit of doing something a little bit traditional right before this season goes where it goes, particularly with the Daleks. This serial shows what we have usually been doing with Trumbly Robots in the kid-friendliest fashion possible, and then five minutes before the end, we get a taste of Mission to the Unknown. And it's such a drastic shift. There's no clue offered as to what's going on. A man wakes up in a jungle that's filled with terrifying noises, and he feels an urge to kill. The animation really leans into how much of a 180 this is. It's the kind of thing I miss from the Hartnell era. Who hasn't really done this apart from maybe season 12, which is to end every episode on a cliffhanger or a lead into the next story? Maybe it's not ideal, but I just think there's a really interesting way to play with tone and expectations there. Now I'm depressed. Aw, oh, are you hung up on how the TV industry perceives human beings with lives as disposable? What? No, I'm worried about our relevance. That blackguard Mr. Tardis has caught up with us on the Hartnell Reviews. I really don't want us to look like we're copying off him. Okay.